All right. Hey guys. So today on Girl Talk with Crystal, I am talking about um, how if you want to have it all, you can't do it all. And I was inspired to talk about this for two main reasons. One, because right now I'm literally transitioning in my life of um, literally having a village. Hi. I'm transitioning with a huge village in my life um, to do everything that I want to do. And I'm seeing the more that I reach after my goals, the less that I'm able to do everything. And so I'm reflecting on the perfectionist in me, the controller in me, the person who wants to be superwoman like Crystal does everything. She cooks and she cleans and she does her laundry and she runs her businesses and she takes her kids to everything. And she's room mom and she does all these things. And and over the past, I would say like two and a half years, I've slowly been <clears throat> letting go of pieces of that. And so I wanted to reverse engineer and share how I got to this point. And then the second part of that was of motivation. Hey, give me a kiss and then I'm almost done. Close the door for mommy. As soon as I'm done. Okay, show Eva where it's at. She can get you one. And close the door, please. Thank you. Um, so the other part of that was, I would say about a month or so ago, I was reading a blog post that was saying how the title literally, so I was, I it was probably two or three months ago because I was marketing for my last wave of my Fox Project and Brand Me program. And my marketing like slogan was all about you can have it all. Like if you enroll in this program, if you learn my formula, if you join my community, you're going to learn how to have everything you want. You're going to be able to be the wife, the mother, the businesswoman. Like for those of you who want to have everything and you're looking for that balance, I got you. That was my marketing pitch, right? And, and by marketing pitch, I don't mean like it was a lie. I mean, that is what I was offering. That's what I believe in. I do believe I have the formula to teach women how to have it all. However, when I read this article, I was very convicted by it. And here's the thing I'm committed to, and I'm so grateful that I've heard other leaders say this because it gave me permission to be like, oh, okay, because the perfectionist in me and the right self-righteousness in me always wants to be right. I always have good intentions, so I never want to be wrong. And so I'm glad that leaders have come before me and admitted that there's things that you guys may have learned from me that maybe I've taught in the past that as I evolve, I, I don't really stand behind as much. And so I've heard leaders say things like, don't put me on a pedestal to be this perfect person that's never going to let you down because I'm going to let you down. And so I thought that that was really free because when I read this blog, the article title was how saying you can have it all is killing like women. Like it's really like, I don't mean literally killing. I don't remember what the slogan was, but it was basically saying how like the, the chase of having it all is spinning women into depression, having anxiety, how to be overwhelmed. They're comparing themselves. They're striving for things that they can never possibly attain. And when I read that, I was like, at first my ego and pride was like, Ugh, that's like, I teach how to have it all. I have it all. I believe you can have it all. I don't agree with that. And I was about to like sweep it under the rug. Like they're wrong. I'm right. But that was my self-righteousness. So this is like, we just did um, the master class today. So if you, if you missed it, one of the things that I talked about was recognizing your triggers and seeing how your triggers are actually clues for areas of your life that you get to improve on. And so I was triggered by that. So because I know my own work, I was like, okay, Crystal, you get to read through this and find why did that trigger you? And the reason why it triggered me was because the truth is, I don't feel like my marketing was per, like 100% landing anyways. And so I was like, maybe I'm wrong. And as I read what the article was saying was it really that it's impossible to have it all. So then the self-righteous, I got to be right part of me was like, oh yeah, like I know that I say that all the time. And so even though what the article actually said is what I actually was doing. So even though I felt wrong by the title, what they taught, I'm actually teaching also. What it taught me was, oh, I get to change the way that I'm marketing to people because I never want people to get the impression that by doing my program, you're going to be able to walk out like this cookie cutter Barbie and you're going to be the perfect wife and the perfect mother and the perfect businesswoman and you're going to have it all together and you're going to find balance 
I hope if you followed me, you know that I don't even believe that. I'm the first to show you guys my messy closet. I'm the first to tell you I hate cooking. I, if you really get intimate to, with me, I'm the first to tell you my sex life goes to shit sometimes. I'm the first to tell you that I'm a bad mom many times. I'm not present with them. Yeah, I'm there. I feed them. I clothe them. I celebrate their birthdays and put Christmas presents under the Christmas tree, but I'm not the most present mom because I'm busy working on my goals or focusing on the house and doing all the to-dos like laundry and cleaning and all that stuff. And so what I wanted to share with you guys today was you can have it all, but having it all in my book means having everything your heart desires. It means finding your vision, getting in alignment with that vision, and making decisions in your life and being truthful in your life around what you really want and not what you think other people want for you. Like I was sharing today on the masterclass, I was saying how, you know, a lot of my mom guilt was coming from like seeing moms who were like, oh, I've never left my kid and they're three years old. And here I leave my kid at three weeks old, mom guilt, because I think, oh, I should be more like them. How come I was okay leaving mine? But if that's my truth, if the truth was I have people I can trust with my kids and I want to go on a date night with my husband and I'm okay leaving my three-week-old baby with my mother-in-law or my mom or my babysitter and I know they're in good hands and I know that I breast pumped and I put in work to get enough milk in case they need a bottle and I also know that the baby is probably sleeping anyways, that's my truth. So mom guilt starts to come in when you start comparing what you really want to what you think people want you to have or what other people want or what your parents wanted for you. A lot of people, I follow Gary Vee's content very closely. If you don't follow him, go watch some of his videos. One of his biggest stands that he drives home right now is how people are dying to their parents' expectations. We literally, like, like think about this for a second. He'll talk about how People will say, I don't have money to do what I want to do, and I have all this debt, and I have bills to pay, so therefore I can't follow my dreams. I can't quit my job. Like, I have bills to pay. I can't chase my dreams. I have bills to pay. He's like, because people aren't willing to literally live in a one-bedroom apartment or move back in with their parents because their 30-year-old friends, their 20-something-year-old friends got their starter apartment or their first home. So God forbid I move back in with my parents and they're not willing to take an undercut to their living, not have certain things that they buy for themselves, not drive a certain type of car. People aren't willing to commute on a bus just to not have a car payment, just to have extra money so that they can run their business. So what he teaches is what are you really willing to give up to have the life that you want? So so when it comes to having it all, I believe having it all means having everything you want. And, and I've even shared this before because I laugh with myself like, okay, if I believe you can have everything you want, then where's my boy? Because I really, really want a boy. But like, here's the thing. Like, I still am striving towards that. Clearly, I got five kids and I'm willing to have one or two more to try to get my boy. I'm going to do whatever it takes for me to get what I want. And then if it's not in God's will, I'm not going to have my boy. But I'm not sitting back just saying, oh, I'm going to pray one day that God just makes me like literally my oldest daughter would ask me if I was married. Like, are you, so are you like married? And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, well, you had sex to have have us? And I was like, yeah, I had to have sex. She was like, oh my God, did it hurt? And then she went into this sex tangent. I was like, oh my God. But anyway, so that was a tangent. But my point is, don't be the Mary of your dreams. Like in order to get pregnant with your and give birth to your dreams and your vision, you have to have sex. You have to have some type of intervention. Uh, and I don't know how I did not plan to use a sex analogy, but hey, um, you have to do some type of action to have a baby. You can't just sit back and pray that God gives you a baby. You are not the Virgin Mary, period. So when it comes to your dreams and having it all, what are you willing to put on the line? What are you willing to give up? And so <laughs> um, I've, I've battled back and forth with sharing openly about the fact that I just hired someone to help me cook and I and it's crazy even as much as I will sit here and say I don't care what people think and I'm gonna do me and I worked hard for this 
I didn't post this morning. I literally recorded my girl. Today was her first day cooking. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is happening. I went to upload it into Instagram because that's what I do. I post everything in Instagram. And I was like, eh, delete. I don't want people judging me like, dang, she talks about struggling with money, but she's hiring someone. Like I are, I just had this conversation with people publicly of, of why I'm justifying the fact that, yeah, I am tight with money right now, but I'm also, I see risk. I see investment. I see the fact that if I can free up the fact that I didn't have to cook breakfast, lunch, or dinner today, and I got to just work on my business, like I, that's an investment for me. And so, um, I literally, I'm going to commit to posting it because I realized that I didn't post because of what people think of me. But the reality is, is that I, I have everything I want because I have help and I'm not doing it all. So my moral to you today is that having it all doesn't mean balance. Having it all doesn't mean having it all together. I was a shit show last night. Like literally got new pimples on my face, had to have clearing conversations with my husband and my daughter. Like, I'm sorry, I was a mess today. I was like moody with my husband. I was like snappy with my kids. I was yelling at them. I like, I reached back and almost like, like hit Indy. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm losing it today. I was completely overwhelmed. And a part of my guilt today for having help came from that. Like, you got the nerve to be overwhelmed. You have someone helping you cook. You have someone watching your kids. Like, what are you like? What do you mean you're overwhelmed? But the reality is, is you cannot escape hardship. Life is hard. Whether you're Oprah and you are a billionaire and you can pay, you can literally sit back like this. Life will still be hard because it's all a mind game. Overwhelm is a mindset. Like literally, we all have the same time in the day. Like not having time is a mindset. It's a choice. It's you not doing what you really want to do. Saying you don't have time is basically a revealing that you're not spending your time doing what you wish you were wanting to do. Because that means that you feel like you have scarcity around having enough time for something else that you'd rather be doing. So that's a choice. Going back to the Gary Vee video, are you willing to take a cut in the way you live? Are you willing to not go on vacation for a month or, I mean, a year? Are you willing to cut back on all your extra expenses that are above your, your basic foundational needs and, and take a cut? I say I'm struggling with money, but there's tons of things all in the same sentence of saying I'm struggling will spend $100 on Amazon on things that I need when I don't need any of it. And so, like, even down to, like, I was thinking about this when, I bought um, the baby a uh, high chair and I bought it on Amazon and it was like a hundred bucks. And like, I was looking at the two, $300 ones and I was like, Ooh, I really want that one. Especially cause I'm contracted right now with the baby food company to post pictures of their stuff. And I'm like, I need the cute white, like not like old school, um, high chair. So I need to spend the $300. So it looks like Instagram ready. And then I was like, what? Like, no. So I, I compromised and I spent less money. Well then when, um, when Jason saw it, he's like, why did you get this little cheap boo boo, um, high chair? And in my mind, I was thinking we didn't even need the high chair. She could have been eating the way she had been eating, which was like in one of our arms, or I have this little walker for her that has a big like tray. And I was just putting her in there. So technically I could have took a hundred dollar cut on buying something I didn't need I wanted that high chair I wanted it for my Instagram post I wanted it for the comfort of my baby but look at your life and ask yourself what are the things you're saying you need to be spending your time or your money on that are not in alignment with your bigger vision and that's the first step to having it all it's it's realizing you can't do it all you have to and that I mean that literally and figuratively so I'm gonna wrap it up on this note that um, the literal is you can't do it all. Like, like there's no woman or I haven't met a woman that has everything that has mental sanity. Like she's fully fulfilled and she loves her life. She's cleaning her whole house. She's cooking for her whole family. She's running a successful business. She has time with her friends. She takes care of herself. She's never not, not showered, not, not put together. I'm, that does not exist. I just don't believe that exists. Usually if there's someone who's cooking, cleaning, doing all those things, they're completely a mess inside. They're unhappy. They're overworked. They're super tired. They're unfulfilled. 
They're a hot ass mess. So if you want to have a little bit of both, then start making decisions in alignment with what do you really want? What's most important to you? So I, about three years ago, I stopped fighting my mother-in-law's help because she was like, I'll do your laundry. Let me do your laundry. And I was like, no, I need Jason and everyone around me to know that I do everything. I got to do my own laundry. And then one day I just surrendered and I haven't done laundry since. And it's been the best life I've ever had. Well, not the best life, but it's been the one best part of my life because laundry is, is a big chunk of life. Um, I submitted to that. Then about a year ago, I submitted to the fact that yes, I'm a stay at home mom, but I'm not being a good stay at home mom because I'm constantly putting my kids in front of a TV and saying, shh, shh, shh mommy's got to work or not paying attention to them. And I realized what message am I sending to my kids every time I shish them or don't pay attention to them because I'd rather be working. I'm saying this work is more important than my kids. But then when we talk about triggers when my daughter would be like, all you do is work or you didn't hear me because you're always on your phone or um, like you miss my thing because you had to go to a work thing. When I got one too many things of those and I was like, holy crap, I don't want to be that mom. I realized that the multitasking of trying to do it all was not serving us. And I got to decide that it's okay for me to want to work. And I would try to justify it like, oh, I'm always here. I pick you up from school. I drop you off at school. I feed you. Some parents are always at work. Some people... <laughs> Some people work a nine to five job and they never get to be home with their kids. You're lucky that I'm even here. And I try to justify it. So I did that game for like a good, like six months to a year where I was justifying because I was really triggered by her telling me the truth. The truth is that I was not present. I was missing a lot of stuff and I was putting work before my family. Then I got to go to a crossroad. What do you want, Crystal? Crystal wants to do her business. Crystal wants to serve the world. Crystal wants to create a movement. Crystal wants to help women wake up to their potential and live their best life. But Crystal also wants to be a present mother and a present wife and a domestic woman and take care of her house and, and like raise good girl, girls who become women who have self-worth and they don't have self-worth issues like I had to overcome because I was abandoned as a kid. I was neglected as a kid. So because of, I was repeating that habit. So when I got to that crossroads, I want both. I got to innovate. How do I get to have both? And that became hiring a babysitter. So then I hired a babysitter instead of just asking her on those times where I like absolutely could not have my kids present, I hired her no matter what. So Monday through Wednesday from eight to three, I have a babysitter. I nurse the baby, I give her back. I, I say hi to Indy, I give her back. But then at three o'clock, I shut down and I'm not working anymore. And it's been a work in progress. I've had to like wean off. I'm not perfect, but like I'm way better. I'm past 50%. I'm like probably 70% on. And that's life. You get to just evolve and get better. But now I'm so much more productive. You, Those of you who have been like, oh my gosh, you're popping in your business and I'm just seeing your growth. It's because I'm starting to pay attention to where my time is going and I'm starting to get creative with how I can have it all and not do it all. So Monday through Wednesday, eight to three, I am not mothering my kids. And they're so much better because they're taken care of. They're getting full attention. They're not getting half attention. They're getting full attention. I'm putting full attention in my business. And then at three o'clock, I clock out, I get my kids and I, my, I, I hired a parent coach and she taught me to like do a meditation exercise because I told her, I'm like, I literally like, I love my work. I love the work I do. It doesn't feel like work. So it's really hard to shut it off. So what I was finding was when I would get to my kid time, I'd be like, oh my God, I can't do Legos. Like all I could think about is like, how are my DMs doing? Like, what are people saying? I can't wait to talk to them. And like, I can't wait to go create my next, like, like, um, project or I can't wait to plan my next event and that's what was lighting me up. That's authentic to me. I'm not going to deny that I have more fun growing my business than being a parent when it comes to like sitting down and doing Legos. But what I discovered by being authentic about that was I had intimacy issues. I was disconnected. So once I started addressing why I was avoiding that and why I was triggered by that, then I got to lean into it and start doing the work to heal that and to not be like, I realized 
No one was playing with me when I was a kid. I played by myself all the time as a kid because my dad, my mom was working and my dad was nowhere to be found. So guess what pattern I was repeating? And I was justifying it because, well, mommy's got to work. It's okay to work. You can't fight me on working. And so my moral today is start asking yourself, what do you really want? And then asking yourself, where can you free up not doing everything? You don't have, you can be super mom and not do everything for your kids. Another thing, maybe you're not in a position to hire help and that's a story in itself. This is why I love people who work with me because I will, I will, I will show you how you can find the money to pay for help. Like literally the amount of money I pay for my sitter every week, you probably make that by just spending it at Starbucks or Target or on alcohol when you go out or on trips or like I promise you so if money is the reason why you're not hiring help I promise you you have the money sitting around somewhere that being said start little like start with getting your kids to help a lot of us moms go in and I feel like I'm talking to moms a lot right now but a lot of us super women we want to do everything ourselves my husband used to tell me that you don't ask for help you just want to do everything yourself so once I let down my ego and pride that I had to do everything I just started asking for help my husband does so much he will take the kids to school so that I can do calls he will pick them up so that I can do calls he will watch them on Saturday so I can go to events. It just took me to stop thinking that I had to be everything in my house. And I got to start empowering my husband to be a 50-50 parent. He was ready to do it anyways. I just wasn't letting him. And so how, like, recognizing your relationship, you might be saying, well, my husband doesn't do that. He's not willing to. But have you let him? Or are you the control freak that's like, let me do it anyways. You don't cook the way I want to cook. You don't clean the way I want to clean. You don't watch the kids the way I want to watch them. That was me. And I got to go through the transition of letting, as long as my kids are well taken care of and they're in good environment, let them do it their way. That's what actually builds up character in our kids. It teaches our kids how to diversify and, and interact with different people. Don't create codependent kids that can only be with mommy. How are they going to go in the real world and not know how to adapt to other people and other personalities? You're not actually serving them by being like, oh, they just want me. They just want me. It's fine. Like, like Noli is getting to the age where she just wants mommy. Like, that's a thing. I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm saying don't buy into it so far that you're like, oh, I can't go anywhere because my kid won't take a bottle or my kid won't let me leave them. I learned the hard way. My second kid didn't take a bottle and I didn't leave leave her either. So with the third one, I learned, oh yeah, of course they don't like the bottle. They want the boo. But if you leave them long enough, they're going to eat the bottle if they're hungry. Like that's, that's not, that's tough love and that's my authentic truth. But if you're asking me, how do I do it? That's how I do it. You have to let your kids grow a little. You got to like you, like you can't, like the first time something happens and it doesn't go the way you wanted it to go, you can't just be like, oh, my kid won't take the bottle or my kids don't let me leave them or they don't like how dad cooks so I can't let him cook. You gotta just keep doing it. So I was in today, like I was talking a lot today. I realized the time is already 2.40. I really like to keep these to 20 to 30 minutes, but if you're still here, I appreciate you. I hope this was helpful for you. And I really wanna just encourage you to like find an area of your life that you're completely overwhelmed and either take it off of your plate and um, or ask for help with, with, with doing that so that you can have more of what you want and not be the one actually executing it. Have a good day, guys, and I will talk to you later, and I'll see you next week.